especially like when you're marketing, you have so many people that are watching you that you don't even know that they're just waiting. Like, you know, only 3% of the market is really ever like perfect to buy right now. Mm -hmm. And then you got what I think it's like another 12 to 15% are in the research phase. So, you know, to stay in front of them, um, you know, with the email, with the retargeting, with the Google and the YouTube. So like that's a really big piece. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. Welcome back, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs, and we are back with Mike Bontempo. 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 Man, I gotta get this right. It's Italian names that mess me up. Mike Bontempo. All right. Listen, if you didn't listen to episode part one, I guess I would say, or episode one with him, we talked about how, exactly how, like to the T, to the, to the specific T, how to get your first five clients. If, if you're building an agency, coaching company, consulting company, he gave the full blown marketing plan. It's, it's, a, it's, I say it's hundred percent proof. I don't think there's, if anyone listens to it and actually implements it, I don't think there's possible for someone to not get five clients. But the truth is Mike's got 25. And just to give you a little recap, and I want to tell you too much of it because I want you to go back and listen to it, but you started your agency in June of 2018 as the day we're recording. It is the end of April of 2019. It's not been a year. We're talking about 10 months, I guess it's been. You grew it from nothing. You didn't even know you were going to build an agency. You fell into it in June and it is now doing over a hundred thousand a month. What are you projecting by the end of this year? What do you think you're going to be doing? Like monthly? Yeah. Um... I think 150, 175 maybe. It really really depends on, and we're gonna obviously go over this, but the audiobook, how how close I get it to break even. Okay. Um, if I get it to break even, we're really gonna scale as long as I could have the operations. Yeah. If if I don't, then you know we'll we'll be around there. So. Okay. And the other number was that uh, he's running at about 50%, about 45% margin. So if he's doing 100 grand, it's 45 grand is going into his pocket. So that that's pretty killer. And that's pretty awesome. And for the most part, it's been a very organic strategy, free traffic, free everything up until this point to build your to build your agency. So. So on this particular episode, Mike, I really want to talk to you about how, how you scale. Like, how can someone really make this a big thing? So if you want to hear the first one, go to it, listen to it, and then come back to this one. It was very powerful. Uh, but Mike, as, as is the tradition here, right hand up, please. I, Mike, bon sorry, I'm going to get this right, all right? I, Mike Bontempo. I, Mike Bontempo. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. I will reveal everything about how to get 25 clients i will re i will reveal everything about how to get 25 clients ah, he choked up there a little bit he doesn't, <laughs> want, he doesn't want to give his details i like it and nah, i man, you were you were so giving in the first one i mean full blown flat out put it out there and the strategy that you actually shared in the first one one thing i didn't get a chance to kind of back end into was um you post details i mean i have been able to take your stuff so probably the most saved posts on my personal Facebook are your posts. And I do it for two reasons. One is because the more I do that, I know Facebook will show me more of your stuff so I don't miss any of them. But the second is because I have to reference them when I'm actually applying. You teach like really good stuff. It's not fluffy filler content. It's stuff that I wanna read and I share it to my team. And so it's, it's very smart. And so now what I just did is a really good job pre-selling that episode. So everyone watching and listening is like, what did he talk about? So go back and listen to it. But in this one, we're going to start right off into the meat, into the rounds. I got to put my little timer on here. Um, and we're going to say what, what comes next? Just, you shared one strategy that basically got you four out of the five clients. And you shared the second thing, which was email. Um, now, round number one of this uh, of our episode here, what next? How did you grow your marketing so that you can get more clients to go from five to 25? What did you do next? So we did a lot of the organic as well as, as I talked about in the first episode, but then the second piece was we launched an audio book. So before you go into that, let's talk about the organic real quick that you talked about in episode one, which is you posting these case studies, these powerful on your personal Facebook page. How do you have a schedule how often you do these or do you just do them every now and then? I just do them every now and then. When, when I, when I was like really, um, 
getting a, a bunch of client like when i first like started i guess the agency or whatever i did it more frequently um like what's more do, frequently how often pro do do probably it? like twice a week maybe okay. three times a week now now i don't do it as much just because i have so much lead flow and and i and i don't need to um i should to be honest with you because it, you just get like the 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 people that i have on my friends group are like just perfect clients they have money they could afford my services they already have a sales funnel so honestly i should be doing more posts um but yeah i mean probably like two to three times for the first like four or five months okay i, I would say so just to give everyone some context what mike does is and he shares the specific specific details in the prior episode but he will post really, really good case studies, results, sh dissecting exact campaigns because he is running a paid traffic agency. So he'll post pictures and proofs and all what he's doing in the case study format on his personal Facebook page. And then people will comment and reach out and he'll message them and he'll offer them like, hey, do you want me to, you know, do you want to talk to me about your ads? And so doing that two to three times a week is excellent in the beginning because it's just free lead flow, more and more people seeing it, more and more people talking. And that led you to getting all your first clients. Now, after that, that was the very next thing. So you're sitting there and you're thinking, all right, I gotta market my own agency. Was the next thing you did to start your podcast or to do more emails or was it the book? It was the audio book. Okay. So one of my clients actually, he had, um, he had a book offer that we were really, you want me to get into like what he Let's did? Let's do it. That's the next thing you so, did, yeah. So I had, I have a client that, you know, we sell, we were selling anywhere from 300 to 400 books a day. Um, we were, it was actually in the French market and you know, he's, he was in the consulting niche. So pause. Sorry. That was a post that got me. You posted that case study because I was selling my books at that time. I was running book funnels. Yeah. That was a post. You must've posted it around October, November timeframe. Or something. Anyway, so sorry. Go ahead. So yeah, he's selling three to five hundred books a day in the French market. So I was, and I see, you know, I'm running the campaigns. I'm seeing his numbers. He's doing unreal numbers, you know, and and I saw the whole thing. So I was like, you know what? I could take this model and do it for my agency. Like, you know, he's, and the French market's a little bit cheaper than the U.S. market, but you know, e even so, I was like, I could take this model. I see the whole model, and I could do it for my own agency. So I put together, I wanted to do a book, but I'm like, I hate writing. I don't hate it, but like, I didn't want to sit down and uh, write a whole book. It would take me so long. I'm like, let me just talk into my mic. I put together a whole outline on what, it, what I wanted to talk about, and I knew I wanted to do on Facebook ads and how to get more clients. Um, because like, I wanted to be a little bit more specific than, oh, you know, here's how you run Facebook ads. Everybody says that. I wanted to be like, okay, here's how you run Facebook ads to get more clients. And the reason I did that is because I want business owners. I don't want people that are dabbling in it. So if you want to get more clients, that means you, you probably run a legitimate business. So when I get on the phone with you, it's going to be a lot easier for me to charge you $4,000, $5,000 a month. And you get rid of a lot of the, um, you know, broker people. Got it. So pretty powerful. All right. So let's talk about that. So what, how long is your book? Uh, hour and a half, hour and a half audio. Wow. I did not know that, that you've, you've made some decent uh, chunk of change from that. How long did it take you to put that together? Um, it's pretty pro powerful. Probably a month, okay. month, month, and oh, you're talking about just the audio book or oh, the just whole the audio book? Just the audio book. Oh no, pr probably two weeks. Okay, and that was between the outline and the recording, yeah, and all of the whole thing yeah. while you're running your agency, by the way, right? So you're doing this yeah, part time, correct? Okay, all right. So you're writing the book, you get the book done. Walk me through your book funnel, and then we'll talk about how this book funnel has impacted your client acquisition. So what does your book funnel look like? So it's a dollar ninety nine up front. We have a bump offer for forty seven dollars on how to get high ticket clients through a webinar. First up sell is $197 for like done for you ads, like, you know, how to get, it, it, it's literally ads and like funnels that, you know, we've either ran for clients or our own ads and funnels, um, videos plus the PDF. And then we have a down sell to pay of $97. And then we have upsell two is either a free trial for seven days and then $79.95 a month for funnel walkthroughs. It's month monthly funnel walkthroughs. Then we also have the yearly option at $297 that they could pay for the whole year. And then our last um, product is called our Cover the Internet package, which essentially shows um, it's a whole live training that I did on how to retarget across YouTube, Google search, Google display. So you have three upsells. Yeah. Well, you've got a bump, upsell one, upsell two, upsell three. Yeah. Wow. 
All right. Uh, I got all kinds of questions. So first, I want to make sure everyone knows this because there is some there is magic to this. Your book is not a typical free plus shipping and handling book offer. Yours is a dollar ninety nine for an audio book. And the reason we do free plus shipping and handling and the reason I've done, I don't know how many hundred fifty thousand books I've sold that maybe more from that model is because, you know, it's free but you just have to pay shipping and handling. The problem is that most people don't realize that you truthfully do lose a lot of money. So for every book, even though I collect $7.97 sh uh, uh, in shipping and handling, it costs me $13 on average between print, fulfillment, and all that. So you eliminate that right away because it's a it's a $1.99 audiobook, so $13 is eliminated. Um, plus, it was so much easier to put together because you just had to do an audio recording. And you've got a bump offer. And the other thing I know is you're an avid, avid split tester. So what ty what price is your bump at? Uh, well, right now we're actually running a test of 27, 47, and 77. 27's actually winning by a little bit. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny because we saw this. We ran a test, and what what is crazy that people will find is the huge difference um, in conversion from a dollar ninety nine buyer to a seven dollar ninety seven buyer. So when we did seven dollar ninety seven cents, we were finding forty seven was the best bump price. Uh, but we recently did for another company I'm involved in a test and found that it's actually twenty seven uh, for the dollar ninety nine buyer. All right, and then your first upsell is a uh, one ninety seven. Yep. Your second upsell was uh, zero uh, free trial free for trial. for seven days and then seventy nine ninety five a month. How many people have you been able to put into that? Um. Probably like ninety. No, well, probably a little bit more. But we've had good uh, a good amount of cancellations. To, to yeah, it's that's free money. It's free yeah. monthly money. Yeah, literally. and then your last package. How much is that? Upsell three. Uh, free, free for seven days. Then one payment of forty nine ninety five. Now that was kind of a. Like, like 4,999? No, no, no. Oh. 4,995. Oh, like 50 yeah. bucks. Okay. So, and that was kind of like, I just threw it together. Kind of, kind of an offer. It's actually converted pretty well. 10%, like 10 point. Wow. One eight percent. So you're finding people are patiently going through this multi multi three upsell funnel. Yeah. We're you, you got any complaints or anything about that? I've gotten a couple where like, oh, you know, there's a lot of upsells, but I mean, you know, he, he, the, my yeah, my thing is like our average cart value right now we're sitting at twenty one dollars and fifty seven cents this month, which is pretty good on a dollar ninety nine offer. Um, and it costs us around like thirty-five dollars to actually acquire. So about fourteen dollars negative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you've got a real reason you're doing this, and that is to get clients. Yep. Okay. So talk to me about that. So how many books are you currently selling per day? Um, anywhere from fifty to sixty. We've actually bought right like right now we're spending like fifteen hundred dollars a day on that offer. Okay. And you're using obviously Facebook, YouTube, the usual stuff you're doing for your clients to, to drive most of your sales. Yep. It's, it's through media buying. Yep. And so if you're getting let's just say fifty for easy math, fifty books uh, sold a day. How many do you believe uh, clients, well, not believe, I'm sure you have your data, you're a numbers guy. How many clients is that bringing you or how much money is that bringing you per month uh, just by having 50 book sales a day? So probably, let, let's just take this month, for example, I'll probably end up doing $20,000 on the front end. Um, and then like for actual payments up front, not, not counting the other payments. Um, Probably like forty forty thousand, but in the back end. E no, not for like probably another twenty thousand on the back end. But okay. that's only the I'm not c counting the other payments. They're gonna rebuild because yeah. if they're a client, they're gonna pay yeah, every month. So that's uh, just collected now. Yeah, correct. So, so does that put you in major profit though on your book funnel? Yeah, okay. yeah, it does. And you've got other. So you've got um, in episode one you shared your four different pricing models for someone to uh, hire you as a consultant or someone who's doing your ads. But I, I, you've mentioned before to me in other conversations that you have like a coaching thing. So you have other products that are sold in the back end as well. Can you talk through that a little bit? Yeah, so essentially the, the thing is you're gonna get with a $1.99 audio book, you're gonna get a lot of people that just can't afford your agency. And even if they could, they're probably not like a good cl uh, client because they don't have the, the numbers. They're just not gonna be good to work with. So it's not like, oh, well, they can't work with my agency, let's just throw them away. My thing was, let me put them into an eight week coaching program where we can get them to a point where we could actually graduate them to my agency as well. And we've actually successfully done that with a good amount of uh, clients so far. Um, and, and it just builds, you know, 
obviously you make your money there, but it also builds goodwill. Like you're literally selling them for eight weeks. So it's like, do you want me to run your ads? And they're like, yeah, because they've been taught for the last eight weeks by me and my team. So, um, and, and, and it just, it just helps, you know, because you're going to have, I would say 60%, maybe even higher, maybe 70% are just not a good fit for our agency at all. Like, okay just like no shot but there's something to be collected from them still yeah so exa the exactly so you got the coaching group you've got your agency uh is there anything else that you're selling just just that so just you have the you. agency well you have the coaching program i have a vip day in my office which is fifteen thousand dollars so clients fly out i do a full have you day sold some of those yeah i have okay awesome all right um powerful so would you i think you've said this earlier uh, or, or maybe in a private conversation you and I were having, but is that how many clients since when did you launch your book, by the way, let's, let's go through some macro numbers. Um, like end of November. So let no, not end of November, end of October. So let's say November, November of 2018. How many have you sold now total? Um, I think like 4,000, 4,000, how many, if you had to just ballpark guess it, even if you don't have the exact data, how many of those 4,000 do you, would you say have become clients, not coaching, but actual clients for agency, right? Yeah. Um, I think like 11 or 12, 11 or 12. So out of your 25 clients, about almost half, almost half, a little less than half have come from your book funnel. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's amazing. All right. So we talked about your book funnel, which you put up. Um, I want to keep moving on. I want to go to the next round and I want to ask about some of the other marketing things that you're doing to scale your agency. All right. So round number two, let's talk about how many... In the first episode, we talked about how you got your first, mostly your first five clients from your organic post strategy. So that was five. Then we picked up another 12 here from your book funnel. Uh, so we're up to, let's say, roughly 17, 18 or whatever. So we're missing a seven or eight. Where did these guys come from? Um, I mean, I More have organic my- organic post stuff? Yeah. I mean, my, my email list, I would say. Okay. Uh, because I, I, so I really mainly- email about two things, either my eight week coaching program or my agency. So I'll have people that will book a call, um, from that. And then the, the other, the other way is referrals as well. I forgot literally all about that. Yeah. I'm sure that's big. Yeah. I do. Okay. So you're getting a lot of referrals. Your email list when we first spoke about it was 50,000, but it wasn't really that qualified when we talked last episode because it had come from a different world. It wasn't when you were running an agency. It wasn't when you were talking to active businesses doing Facebook and Google and YouTube and all. But now you've sold 4,000 books. So I'm assuming your list has kind of upgraded itself. Have you found, found that to be a big difference maker? Like, are your new email clients coming from, like, having been recently put on your list, or are they coming from the old? Uh, no, I would say the, you know, the, the, new, new, the new buyers from the audiobook. You are, know? You, are you also finding that, like, just because someone bought your book in January and didn't book a call in January. Are you finding that some of them maybe they wait two, three, four months and then book later? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean they're watching my videos uh, and and we're I'm sure we're about to talk about this like my Facebook group where yeah. I do where I do posts. So you know I've you especially like when you're marketing, you have so many people that are watching you that you don't even know that they're just waiting. Like you know only three percent of the market is really ever like perfect to buy right now mm -hmm. and then you got what i think it's like another 12 to 15 percent are in the research phase mm -hmm. so you know to stay in front of them um you know with the email with the retargeting with the google and the youtube so like that's a really big piece and you you have like we're, we're signing on a client on tuesday who's actually coming to my office he's he's come to my office before and we've been talking with him since like november but he had to sell one of his houses in order to like he, he does investment properties and uh he has to sell one of his houses he finally sold it now he's coming in and he's uh okay. he's gonna join us and he wouldn't he, he probably wouldn't have joined us if, if i wouldn't stay so how often do you email your list every day oh every I, day. I, I i try to there's okay. some days that i miss but and so every day you are sending them case studies, stories. What are you doing? Because you said you only promote two things, your coaching program or a call with you. So just again and again, you just keep promoting the same things to your list? Yeah. So, I mean, the people that have bought the audiobook, yes. Then the other people, like I'll promote the audiobook every now and then. Um, I have done one like affiliate promotion in the past like six months, but I mean, you know, that's really not much. 
So yeah, I mean, really everything's pertains for the either eight week coaching or the. But agency. your email topics are mostly case study driven, or what do you do? Um, case study. I do a lot of case studies, and then I do a lot of story okay. based. Just talking about what's happening in your business. I, I saw the one that you've sent out recently, a couple. Um, so and they've been story based, like, hey, I'm here. I'm doing like you sent out an email today talking about how you're here at the Learn Center. Yeah. So, um, powerful. Okay, so email list. Uh, if someone does a book funnel, their email list is going to start organically growing anyways. Did you do anything else? I mean, you had an email list, but then in June you were like, oh, wow, I'm now an agency. Then did you go out and do like a whole marketing campaign to build a new email list or you just no, sat I mean, on the one you so, had? No, so I launched, I launched a case study funnel. Um, it does... It does okay. It doesn't do great. We've closed a couple of clients, but we haven't been able to scale that just okay. because so many of the people just, they can't afford us. So like that was the biggest problem that we ran into. Like that was the first one. I was like, let me put together a case study funnel. Um, and just a lot of, and I, like, I won't lower my prices. I don't want to, Oh, like, you know, I'll give you $500 a month. No, because I'm going to take my eye off the ball to work for you, to work with you. I, and that, that's not my model. Like I want high paying clients. So that was actually the first thing that we did launch. Um, and we still run it for retargeting and it, like we, we just closed two weeks ago, like a $9,000, well, yeah, $9,000 a month client um, off that. That was actually before I raised it to $10,000 a month. So you're raising your prices pretty quickly here. Yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. So, hey, if you're, uh, if you're watching right now and you want Mike to do your stuff, you better go to onicpodcast.com, click the link in the show notes, get over there, call, because by the time you talk to him, I'd be 20 grand a month for all I know. He's in high demand right now. All right, listen, book funnel, awesome. You, you described it perfectly. I get it. Uh, email list, I get it. Let's move on to the next round, and I really want to talk to you about this. The, um, so actually, before we do that real quick, you had mentioned something before we started this episode, and I want to throw that out there. So you post these case studies, these you do a lot of videos and things on your personal Facebook page. And then um, the next thing we'll talk about is how you started a Facebook group. But you said YouTube also. You, 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 try to ch you try to make sure your YouTube is active. Talk a little bit about that. Like why and what are you posting there and how often are you posting there? Um, so my, my one thing was like last year, I was like, I, I saw these other marketers really killing it with YouTube and, you know, building up a subscriber base of like a hundred thousand. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go do that too. So I kind of went on this kick of, you know, doing YouTube all the time. And, and then I just kind of lost faith for it. And, you know, but I still have those videos there. Mm -hmm. So that builds um, organically um, because I run so many ads. I just think people like we get anywhere from like four to five subscribers a day. So I will just take the posts that I put on my personal Facebook and then I'll upload them to YouTube. Um, just like the little case studies like the the other day I did um, like three paid traffic uh things that you need to, to scale. Um, and like, I just upload that and like, it just, it's, it's a multi-touch thing. So like, you know, especially when you're dealing with high ticket clients, they're looking at your YouTube, they're looking at your podcast, they're looking at your personal, they really want to get to know, Hey, is this guy legit? Um, should I really give him, you know, 5,000, $10,000 a month? So Th that's what you call omnipresence, right? It's yeah. like being on every platform. And it's funny because I think a lot of people downplay, uh, the idea of I posted a video on you because when you're first starting, you don't have a lot of subscribers or whatever. You post a video on YouTube, you get 52 views and people will think, God, 52 views, like who cares? But here's what's crazy about YouTube. I find, first of all, um, I've done a lot of like a lot of the analysis of the analytics and I find one to count as a view on YouTube. It's 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a long time. That's not a short time. Second, I've actually watched the chart. The amount of people that get to the end of even an hour long videos is like 15 to 20% sometimes. That's huge. And the other thing you gotta think about is if you're selling like a 9,000 or 10,000 a month, a month program, 52 views is a lot, right? Like one person could be, could, could do it. So I actually, I love the idea that you are, you're omnipresent. So you're showing up on Facebook and what we talk about in the next round, you built your Facebook group and then you're, you're showing up on ads for people because you got your book and then you're showing up on YouTube if they happen to be there. So it's powerful. All right. So let's move into the next round. I think, I think we're up to round number three and this one I saw you recently do. And when I saw you do it, I went, Oh man, this guy, he just keeps getting better and better. So I, I really, I really like it. And I want to talk to you about it. And that's Facebook groups. All right, so in this round, um, you recently, 
I don't know how long ago, two months, a month, a month, a month ago, uh, you launched a Facebook group and I was invited to it. It's called Paid Traffic Vault. Yeah, the, paid traffic vault. the Paid Traffic Vault. So if you're listening, I highly, highly, it, it's awesome. It's a really good Facebook group. It's one of the few I actually read. Paid Traffic Vault. Um, get in there. It's free to join. And uh, when you did this, walk me through. Why now? What was the psychology? What are your devious ways? What are you thinking there? So I wanted to have another touch point with all of my audiobook subscribers. So, you know, if you could, if you could have them on email, that's great. If you could have them on, you know, retargeting, that's great. I wanted to be in their face again. So I was like, you know what, let me put them into a group as well. So I could continuously pre-sell them. And the people that are on the fence, they're like, oh, you know what, maybe I'll hire this agency, maybe I won't. If they're seeing me every single day posting story, case study, this, that, because email, you know, you, you might get, like for, for my buyers list, it does well. It goes like 20% opens. But like for your group, I mean, that's just another way that you're able to reach these people. And it's easy for me to throw on a Facebook Live and just be like, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, my thoughts for the day. And it's, it's just another way to reach them. Yeah. And the second thing is the virality. Hopefully I said that right. Um, <laughs> I think everyone gets it. Yeah, yeah. The viralness. Vi yeah, the viralness of Facebook. So, like I said before, on the personal pages, you're able to do these yes posts or like the reply posts. And you could do that in your group as well. And people will comment, comment, comment. And you do the same strategy and you're able to reach out to them. So now you're talking to your buyers again. You're opening up a conversation and then you could get them back on the phone. And it's just it's just another way to, to reach them and to get them to actually comment and and then you then it's you, not a lot of work either right no kinda, it's not it's just yeah it, it, that's really powerful so you started it a month ago with zero what's it up to now I think it's closing in on 900 members that's amazing and you've not done any paid ads or anything to that you just kind of put it out there and let people know about it yeah so for my audiobook the first text that goes out um, we have a simple little SMS that says hey go join our free uh, paid traffic group. And you know, ask any questions that you have. That is awesome. And have you? Do you feel you've already closed anything from it in yeah. the last month alone? Yeah. So one one deal. Um, the 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 second deal that we actually just closed from from. Um, I don't know if I could attribute it back to Facebook, but I know he's in the group. Okay. And then there there's another one that's on the fence. I definitely it it definitely helps okay. because they're 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 just seeing you more and more. And then I think too, they see how many new members are coming into the group. So they're like, oh wow, like this guy actually knows what he's doing. And then, you know, you could have your current clients and stuff post in it and they're able to see like one, one of my clients posted. And I didn't even ask him, he was just like, you know, Mike's helped me so much, blah, blah, everything's good. And people see that. Like, you know, if you actually go into your group insights, a lot of these posts get 400, 500 views and I only have like 900 members. So that means almost half of my buyers are seeing are seeing these posts, so. Yeah, it's a 50% organic reach on Facebook is insane. Yeah. That's awesome. So is this gonna be, are you, are this, you're a month into the Facebook group. Would this, would you say this is a strategy you're gonna double, triple down on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're liking it? And so uh, how else would you grow it? Or just keep it kind of going as is. No need to like. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I, I want to have the right people in there. I don't want to have bad people because then it kills the organic reach. Yeah. You, you just want people that already know you that are your customers or that can become a client. Um, and so they, they like, they comment and all that stuff. And you keep the group active. And then, you know, Facebook rewards you with more um, viralness. Wow. Powerful, powerful stuff, man. Um, paid traffic vault. I recommend everybody get in there. And even if you're not interested in paid traffic, which you should be, but if you're not, uh, watch how he does his posts because you do, you go live, it's organic, it's very raw, which just gives you more connection with everybody. And, uh, but again, I mean, a lot. So what I'm hearing for you to go from five to 25 clients, a lot of this has been organic and it's been more of the same stuff. The book helped a lot, but the book is also a moneymaker and it's profitable from the first get go because of the fact that you have the back end offers. Yeah. And from what you and I have spoken about off topic, I mean, your biggest problem right now is how do I handle all this growth? Yeah. 
And that's in any business, that's like the best problem to ever have. So that's very powerful stuff, man. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. A couple of things. So we're going to try something very new today. I'm going to use you as a guinea pig on the fighting entrepreneur. And I appreciate you being willing to do that. We're going to take a quick break. I'm um, here about what's happening over here at Learn Nation. And then we're going to come back. And what we've got is two of our listeners of the fighting entrepreneur who are both involved in starting their own agencies right now. And I'm hoping that we can give them about 10 minutes to ask you questions and get direct advice from you. So it'll be fun. First time we're trying this. Uh, again, if you want to grab any of the URLs, notes, or anything, onicpodcast.com, that's also where you can go to listen to the prior episode, which was very powerful. If you're on YouTube, remember to leave a comment, click subscribe, hit the little bell thing, give Mike a good shout out, say something nice to him, join him on Paid Traffic Vault. Um, all the URLs, if you want to hire Mike, if you want to talk to Mike, book a call with Mike or his team, and you want to work with him on uh, getting traffic and having him run your traffic, then all the URLs are also in the show notes, onicpodcast.com. Uh, go out there right now. All right, so let's take a quick break. We'll be right back where we're going to ask Mike some really pointed questions and keep the learning going. Hey, my name is David and I'm a videographer here at Learn. Are you a member of the Learn Nation? Learn Nation is a powerhouse of knowledge and courses taught by industry experts. We teach everything from copywriting and creating Facebook ads to building funnels and an email list. And that's just the beginning. And you want to hear the best part? Signing up is totally free. There's no credit card required. Go to learn.com slash register to join the Learn Nation today. All right, welcome back. Check this out. It's a little bit different. We got a little setup different. If you're listening on a podcast, then that makes no sense to you. You've got to go check us out on YouTube. So what we've got with us here today, we've got two of our listeners. Uh, we've got the beautiful Crystal. Crystal, thank you for joining us. And then we've got the beautiful Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, thank you for joining us. Um, they are... yeah. They are agency owners, and I thought, how awesome would it be, because they happen to be here today, if they could ask questions directly to Mike. And so before we wrap up this awesome episode, Mike, thank you, man. You have seriously been dropping massive, massive gold on both of these episodes. But we'll start with Crystal. Crystal, any question you want to ask Mike? Yeah, I'm kind of curious uh, in terms of the funnel, you know, because most of the clients I've been working with, they don't know about ads. They want to run ads, but they don't know anything about funnels either. So how do you get through that? Like, do you consult them on their funnel? Yeah, so like a lot of the people that don't have uh, a solid funnel, if they don't have a solid funnel, like with numbers, usually I don't take them on as a client. Um, but I do have an eight week coaching program, which I'm able to actually uh, like consult with them and, and help them to get them to a point where we can take them on for an agency uh, as an agency. The, the problem is no amount of paid traffic is going to fix a bad offer and a bad funnel. So it's going to look bad on me, especially if they don't really know, because, you know, let's say they pay me $4,000 a month and, uh, they launch and they, they only make 500 bucks and they spent, you know, another 200, uh, $2,000. Now they're, uh, $5,500 in the hole. And I look like the bad guy. So I don't really take on clients that don't have some sort of metrics. And usually I look at, um, cost per acquisition. So like, uh, cost per acquisition in regards to actually getting a customer, um, average cart value. So what does that customer initially spend with them? And then lifetime value uh, so they could actually make a profit. And if if they don't know those numbers, it, most of the time I won't take them on because I'm not really going to be able to help them. The only time The only time I will take them on as a client is if they fully understand that it takes time to get to a point where uh, you might be profitable. Like my audiobook funnel, I, I still lose anywhere from 20 to 30% of my money, like on day one. Like we spent, what we spend this, this week, we spent like $9,000 on, on ads and we've brought back on the front end, like $6,500. Now an average marketer, they'd probably be like, wow, you know, I just lost a bunch of money. But when you know your lifetime value, it's like, no, I just made a bunch of money because I know my lifetime value is going to be a lot higher than my cost per acquisition. So, yeah. So, so ever, ideally, should she even be dealing with a client that doesn't know a funnel or have a funnel? If, if, you're going to be running paid traffic for them. I, I wouldn't, unless they were, unless you educate them and tell them, Hey, listen, you, you might do terrible on this. You might spend a bunch of money. It might not convert and you know, it might not work. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm just going to do a follow up because some of the clients that I have are offline. So they do have a business they're converting, but through, uh, uh, live events. So they they don't have a live funnel, right? So I'm kind of building the entry for that. 
and driving the traffic to that. And the conversions happens during the live event, which they're very good at. But, you know, how do I track that? Uh, Facebook offline conversions. So you can take that uh, list and you can upload it back into Facebook and then it'll um, match it back to the campaigns that you have. We were actually talking about do, that. Do you have a video about this? No, I do not. Okay. There, I, there's I there's like did. articles out there. There's videos on, on how to do it. It's not, it's not hard. So it's you set up Facebook offline conversions. You have Zapier and then you could have it. Let's like how do they process? Do they process through Stripe by any chance? Well, no, through the local, well, because I'm in the Latin American uh, kind of market, so we don't have Stripe there. So you could probably use Google Sheets, and you could pull in the name, the email, and the amount um, that they actually spent, the customer. You can pull that in f through Facebook offline conversions, and you can see where it actually came from. It's pretty powerful. Even we're not doing this, so uh, that's something that Learn's going to implement now this coming week, because that, that's awesome. That's really powerful. All right, Jimmy? Well, I have two questions. One, super random. Second one is about your sales process. First one, is the red shirt a branding thing? No, I just really like red. Got it, because it's literally the same one as his profile picture. I'm like, is he doing like a Chris record orange oh. hat? No, I, I just, I really like red. I mean, it's just stands out. I don't know. Sometimes he comes off very innocent, but I feel like there's a lot of like, <laughs> like plotted things in his marketing. Yeah, like, so it could be. like the person on Facebook. I'm like. <laughs> like you look like yourself, Mike. What's up with <laughs> you know, that? Like shirt, everything. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Second question. Real question. What's your actual sales process? So you generated the lead. They came in. You pick up the phone. Are you fully trying to close on the first call? Is there a second call? Or what's the whole? You, a lot of them are closed on the first call. And my, my whole sales process is literally just questions. It's um, what's your cost per acquisition? What's your average cart value? What's your lifetime value? What are you currently spending uh, monthly on ads? Um, what are your goals? Like what's your goal monthly revenue? Um, what's your current monthly revenue? And like the, those two questions are big. Like if they're spending like $50,000 a month on ads, I know they could afford my services. If, if they say, oh, well, we're spending $1,000 a month on ads, I'll stop it right there. I'm just going to be like, hey, man, I, I don't know if you're going to be a good fit for these. For, for, for this, like, you know, what, what kind of, you know, yearly revenue, what would you do last year in, in revenue or something like that? And like if they're like, oh, well, we did, you know, $25,000, I'm going to be like, no. Like even like I wouldn't want to take them on even really if they could afford maybe one month because then they're banking on me hitting a home run. And if I don't, then they're, they're not going to pay me for the rest of my months. And then I'm obviously not going to be a happy camper. They're not going to be a happy camper. And I'm, you know, it's just not something, something that's good. So then finally, I ask them, like, what's your number one goal? Oh, well, you know, I want to scale to, let's say, $100,000 a month. And then, okay, cool, when do you want to get started? It's literally, like, just, just questions. And, um, you know, when do you want to get started? And then they're like, oh, well, you know, I want to get started ASAP. Cool. So here's, here's how we work. Here's how we charge. We charge $4,000 a month for one traffic source, um, you know, or 10% of ad spend. Two traffic sources, $6,000 a month or 10%. Um, $6,500 a month for omnipresence package uh, and $10,000 a month for all three traffic sources. Which, uh, which package do you think you're uh, leaning towards? Oh, well, you know, uh, I really want all, all three of them. Cool. So, so you want, you know, Facebook, you want Google, you want YouTube, you want all of that. Is that correct? Yeah, cool. All right. So why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't I get your uh, name and your company name? I'll put together the contract while you're on the phone. I'm going to shoot that over to you. After you sign that, I'm going to shoot that onboarding form over to you. You fill that out, and then we're going to get an onboarding call. Uh, we're going to get an onboarding call after that. How does uh, Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time work? Does that work for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, that should work. Cool. So now I'm assuming the sale. Right. And, you know, if they're not ready to go, they'll be like, oh, well, you know, I got to think about it. But, like, I literally always assume the sale. And, like, I just... I lay out the process for them. Hey, here's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to get you the contract right now while we're on the phone. We're going to go over it while we're on the phone because the last thing you want to do is, oh, well, you know, check out the contract and get back to me. Close the deal while you're on the phone and tell them, hey, you're going to sign the contract and I'm going to shoot you over the onboarding form. We do a simple Google form with like 15 questions. You're going to fill that out. Once I get that back, then we're going to jump on an onboarding call and we c I, I actually have an open spot. I could either do tonight at whatever, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or I could do tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Which one works for you? 
oh, well, boom, and that's it. And it's not, and I don't, like, there's no, like, craziness to it. It's just questions. And then they'll probably just ask me a few questions about, oh, well, you know, do you handle the creatives? Do you handle this? Do you handle that? And stuff. AKA, the red shirt is by design. This guy, look at him, man. He, he <laughs> assumed the sale. He, he was so innocent. He looks so nice. That guy is, he's a shark. I like it. <laughs> nice. Sorry, go ahead. Do you ever get any questions about, like, expected ROI and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. and how that was my question, else? too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Y yeah, um, and, and I tell, like, it really depends on their numbers. So if they have numbers, like, oh, well, you know, my CPA is $25, my LTV is $95, then I'll kind of go into their creatives and say, well, what kind of creatives are you doing? Are you doing videos? Are you doing this? How much are you testing? And then the retargeting is huge. How much are you doing for retargeting? Are you doing, you know, 25%, 50%, 75%, 95% 90%, 95% video views? Are you retargeting all your add to carts? Uh, if you have a webinar, are you doing saw off or attended? Like all those different things. And most of the people, they're not. So I know I could come in there and be like, listen, you're paying $25 for a customer right now. I probably could slice off six to $7 for that. You know, and then if you work that into your numbers, you know, that's really what you're going to see. So I do it based off of numbers. If they don't have any numbers, I explain that to them. And I say, listen, you, right now you don't have any numbers. So how am I, you know, I don't know. Whatever I told you, it's, it's going to be a lie. And I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I'm not that type of guy. And they'll, they'll appreciate that. Like, listen, I, I could say, oh, yeah, you're going to get a 200% ROI. But let's, let's be honest with each other. We, we both know that, that I'm lying because I don't, you don't have any numbers. So I don't know, you don't know. It's purely a test. Powerful. Question? Yeah, I have a question related to um, the Facebook post, which has been like the entire conversation from uh, the episode one. So you said you did, did a post, like a survey kind of taking on interest, then you d did a post, right? And then you private message everyone and then you said and they become leads so you're leading them to a, a, a funnel page like are you get there what, what are you doing then I'm, I'm telling them so if they say they want you know help with their ads I'm saying cool when do you want to jump on a call oh well you know I'm, I'm available in an hour or I'll tell them hey are you available in an hour to jump on a call yeah cool uh, does Skype work or can I get your phone number and then I jump on the phone I go over their numbers just like I told him and then I tell them, hey, listen, when are you looking to get started? Oh, I'm looking to get started ASAP. Cool. Here's what I charge. Let's get going. And then do you do follow-ups for the ones that don't come? Yeah. Yeah, we follow up. I use HubSpot for um, – it's free. Uh, Pipe Drive's also good. I think it's like $7 a month. Um, mm -hmm. And I just throw them. So new leads that I haven't talked to, I have a new lead category. Great leads and, um, you know, close to buying. I have another pipeline for – um, closed, I have another pipeline for, and then closed loss, I have another pipeline for, and you could you could kind of see across the the whole thing. Okay, awesome. I have the last one regarding uh, Facebook group. Yeah, um, so you're growing your Facebook group 900 uh, so far subscribers, and you're planning to grow that. So are you monitoring that yourself? Like you're encouraging people coming from your book funnel to post questions and, and do that? Are you doing that yourself? Yeah, me me personally for now. I, I have one sales guy who. Every now and then, like I'll have them go in there and uh, respond to like the comment posts where I open up sales conversations, but it's like 95% me. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little stretched thin, with, and I should have somebody else. I just I I want to perfect it myself and see what works, and then I could kind of hand it off to somebody else. And but I'm still like I'm the guy, like I'm the guru. Yeah, that's what so, I'm saying. So yeah. so you know I have to do the posts and I have to do that, but like. You know, like maybe monitoring it and banning people. Like I could probably have somebody for that, but eh, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Yeah, I'm just concerned about how you can scale that. Okay. Awesome. I think that was it. Um, how are you qualifying media buyers to join your team? Um, first thing, the biggest thing that I think is a cognitive aptitude test that I use from Wonderlick. It's wonderlic.com. And a uh, cognitive aptitude a test essentially just tests your ability to problem solve. So like that's, that's the biggest thing for me. I want really, really smart people to work for me. If you can't problem solve, you're really going to struggle in this. And that means I'm going to have to babysit you 
And I don't want to babysit media buyers. I want people that I could give a project to, they could take take hold of it and ask questions when they need to. So like that, that's the biggest thing for me. Can you problem solve? Can you figure out things on your own? And then, you know, we could work, we could worry about uh, everything else. Like, you know, we'll talk about their spend. We'll talk about this, but like I've talked to, like we just did another hiring round. We, we brought on two media buyers and there was a bunch of people who spent, you know, three, four or $5 million on ads that I didn't bring on because their cognitive aptitude was like a 30 when I wanted them to be around at least a 70. And the two guys I brought on, the one guy was at a 96 and the other guy was at a 90. Um, and I like me personally, like I scored a hundred on it. So that means like they're close enough to me on a problem solving basis that they could problem solve with, with me. So like one of the guys I actually hired, I gave it to him, my audiobook, And I was like, Hey, listen, I want you to take this audiobook, come up with a big idea and uh, write copy for it, put together the creatives and go from there. And that was probably the third day, he put it together masterfully, um, launched it and it's doing great. And I didn't have to do any of it. Like he literally just took it himself. So hmm. that was a very good question. Nice. All right, okay. Crystal. No, just uh, just uh, about the five first clients. Or how long did it take for you to start hiring your media buyer team? Like um, how many clients did you have? So I took my first client in June. I hired my first media buyer in August. So I think I had like seven clients by then. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. In yeah. two months. So, and that would be all through the organic post strategy yep. that you shared in the last episode. Yeah. Man, that's so powerful. Very cool stuff. All right, one last question. Which one of you has that burning, awesome, it's gonna blow the roofs off this place question? I don't have one of those. I have another question. Do you have a burning? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go. All right, Here's... there you go. My question is, which you kind of answered a little bit before, is how much does the media buyer does? Do they do, do, they do the media planning? How much of the creative do they do? Copywriting, you mentioned he did everything, even the funnel he did. So, mm -hmm. How much are you expecting your media buyer to do or is it just straight look at the dashboard and look at the numbers? So, so I do the planning. Like I meet with my team pretty much every single day and I kind of tell them what to do. I want them to get to that point where they could just kind of do it themselves. Um, but I mean, they pull the stats for the account. They they put to, like we have a video creative uh, like service. Like they're, yeah, they're more of a service. So they're not exclusively part of my team i say they are but they're not exclusively a part of my team um so they're able to submit creative ideas and video ideas to them um so like they can do that they do their copy like i expect them to do the copy i expect them to do the creatives like use camtasia but also use our video design team as well um and launch everything and Kind of, kind of go from there. Now I just do the top level process. Like, hey, listen, we have to hit a fifty dollars CPA. Here's what what I think we should do. We should put together um, this whole testimonial type video. We should take these five videos. Let's send it over to NLC and you know have them transform it. I want you to put together a nice story about it. And here's the copy that I kind of want to get written. Let's get that done. We need it done in two days. Let's make it happen. And like that's I just do the high level strategy, and then they go out and do it themselves. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, Crystal, Jimmy, thank you so much for participating and being our uh, guinea pigs in this uh, Q&A round. Mike, dude, Seriously, Thanks. powerful, powerful stuff you shared. You, you threw it all out there. Nothing held back. Really appreciate you for all of what you shared with our Learn Nation, with our with our fighters. And if you're watching right now, you got to give a thumbs up. If you're on YouTube, you got to hit subscribe. You got to do all those great things because we got to send Mike love. He, he shared everything. Uh, Onicpodcast.com. If you want to listen to the prior episode, if you want show notes, any of the links, anything that was answered, go there right now. Um, and make sure you subscribe on iTunes as well, or Google Podcasts, or all the other different platforms out there. Learn.com, L-U-R-N.com for your free membership. Get in there and up-level your entrepreneurial self. And of course, always remember when life pushes you, stand straight, smile, and push it the heck back. This is Onyx Singhal signing off. See you on the next Fighting Entrepreneur Podcast. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singhal.